My name is Vivek Kapoor. Uh, I'm from India, from Mumbai. Uh, I'm doing camp engineering. I'm in my family now. A lot of uh, sort of reasons to come to the University of Morgan that I had personally. Uh, I did apply to quite a lot of uh, other universities around the UK, like Newcastle, London, Wolverhampton, Coventry, all these other ones. And of course, I did get accepted as well. But uh, when I started uh, doing the research and uh, started looking at where they were located, what the accommodation was like, what the people was like, and we really only, I mean, I wasn't so sure about Wales as a you know, I was part of it, didn't know it was a separate country. But just looking at the whole outlook, that it, it, it appealed in, in some sort of reason where I could see some sort of peace and quiet because, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you know, but I, I grew up the most populated city in the world. So to get away from that, a study is, is a brilliant opportunity. And as soon as I came here, I, I knew that I made the right decision because it's just, it's like a hill station. It's like a vacation spot, but you go into uni at that spot. So it's pretty much a perfect balanced combination. It's not in the hustle and bustle of like your city, you're on the outskirts. So you have basically an education experience rather than just learning a subject. Always been interested in knowing how things work from a very young age and destroying them as well, <laughs> then building them up again and then breaking them out again. Uh, <laughs> uh, engineering was um, sort of like, it, it, was, it was a background that I started coming up from because uh, my, my father sort of into mechanical parts as well. So I was really fascinated by machinery and uh, mechanical because that's the basic the crux of engineering. It explains how every, every other thing works. And um, there's a lot of creativity in there, which I like because uh, creativity, I mean, because I do music, music production as well on the side. So any creative field, I'm there. And this was a technically creative field. And later I'm gonna look into industrial design. So that's pretty much how the mechanical engineering side of came out. The modules that they have pretty much uh, are individually, they stand out, but they connect up together as well. Uh, in, in sort of like even management and mechanics comes together. Because if you're a high post, not just the technical knowledge, but to know how people understand that knowledge through management, is sort of how they come together in harmony. So the modules make the course more progressive. As you know that India is just the second largest populated country in the world. And what it is, is that again, from a big city from Mumbai, that there is a lot of competition. I mean, for 0.2%, you can miss your seat. You cannot get admission into the top university for about 0.2%. And, and at the end, that's not actually your fault because you put in all the efforts. Um, specifically in different countries, uh, what I've realized is that besides the technical knowledge, they also sort of give you uh, credit for your practical hands-on approach. You know, the way you think, the way you approach topics rather than just you know, opening a book and studying theory. So that appeal, sort of, uh, I knew that I would, I would grow in that sort of environment, you know, in, in that sort of experience, instead of just going to work 9 to 5, you know, doing my job, going back home, and then not knowing what I actually did during the day, rather than adapting it as a lifestyle, because it was actually a lifestyle change for me, rather than just, you know, an educational choice. So, well, coming from India, coming to the UK, well, the UK is like, outside India has the most Indians anywhere in the world. So it wasn't that bad initially, because <laughs> when I came to Heathrow, I thought I'd plane just turned back and came back to Mumbai. What was going on? <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, th there are a lot of like social changes, a lot of cultural changes, um, expansion definitely. Not, not nothing that I had to stop. Just more things that I had to add on. Uh, but on, on a social level, it's pretty much similar for me and my friends back home because you know we're sort of a new world, a new generation, and you know we're very influenced by the Western culture, and we, we understand everything before we actually go for it. It's like it was, I wasn't surprised when the whole pub culture came into play because it was like it's pretty obvious and the lifestyle, the way people live. I mean, I did have an idea about it from you know some of uh, the knowledge that I got through media. It's, it's quite a lot of exposure. Um, specific changes, um, everything's open back home, everything shuts here, so that kind of does get you a little bit of organization, gets you a little bit of discipline, I mean, you know, if you're not there at 4 o'clock, you know you're not going to get, uh, I don't know, your mobile recharged, because it's shut, and uh, various other things, I mean, um, public transportation is hardly there, so when you have to find it, you have to follow the train time because uh, back home, honestly, I don't know when the train goes. I just reach the station, I know there's a train every two minutes. So that's, that was a major difference. Um, quite a lot of freedom of expression, I could say, but not, not in a bad sense, of course. Uh, always in a good sense. 
and um, I mean, the, small, the way people live in a smaller town is always different than how people live in a city. Because here, when you actually walk down the street, if you actually meet someone last night, you do tell them hello the next day. Don't just forget about them. There, you might travel in the same train, the same person for the past 10 years, you don't even know their name. You might not even read each other. But here, if you met a person once, I mean, eventually you will end up meeting that person again and greeting them over and over again. I wasn't used to that at all. Because in a big city, you're anonymous. But in a small town, in a community, you're pretty much close together. So that, that was a big cultural change as well. Uh, that, that happened when I came from India to the UK. I got involved with uh, the international students as, uh, well, I came here about four years ago. Uh, I, was, I was 18, I'd just done my um, A-levels or GCSE, whatever you call it, 12th grade in science. And I came here completely on my own with two 30 kilo bags and, you know, it's like 18 years of my life packed in those bags and, you know, sort of nervous. And um, how I came into that was actually, I'll tell you the actual instance how I came into that is when we had a common room. And some of the helpers were, you know, just adjusting a couple of things. And just by virtue of being who I am, I just went and picked up a couple of tables and chairs with them. And I'm like, guys, do you want me to help you move this? And they're like, yeah, we'll go ahead then. And uh, just, just start talking to them. They're like, you know, where are you from? And those sort of questions. And they said, well, if that's your nature, then you should definitely sign up next year to be a helper as well. To make people feel welcome, like they made me feel welcome. Because uh, they sort of put me in my comfort zone. Like letting me know where basic things are, like water, food, what time things shut, uh, what time where you have to go to get certain things done. So once you know your surroundings, then you sort of expand out of them. Because if you, if you don't know your surroundings, you're sort of just an introvert, you know, just in the room. Advice for international students, um, don't be afraid. That's the first one. And um, don't be judgmental is the second one. Uh, because, um, I mean, you know, everyone gets used to their surroundings, everyone gets used to their culture, used to their environment, used to their friends, family. And what you have to understand and what you've got to appreciate is that um, there are other places in the world where they've been doing the same, they've, do, they've been doing stuff this way for about four or five hundred years, or even more than that. So you've got to appreciate the fact that, you know, they have a different way of living and it's working out for them. So don't, you know, sort of come here and say like, oh, back home it was like this and we had stuff better or they had stuff worse. I mean, they've established themselves with that pattern. So appreciate that pattern, adapt certain parts of it for your own uh, sort of personal experience. And um, other advice uh, at Glamorgan specifically is go to the unit every night. <laughs> but um, like I said, there's, there's a lot of interaction going on. And uh, one specific thing I've noticed at Glamorgan, especially while working uh, with the International Support Service, is that there are no specific boundaries. You're just people at the end of the day. You're not posts or you're not designations. You're people. I mean, you're not an executive producer or whatever, you're John or Tom or Tim, whatever. So once you're done for more, I can actually sit and have a point with you. I can have a conversation with you. That is lacking in a lot of countries, I would say personally because uh, I've, I've been in the Rotary Exchange Exchange Student Program when I was back home. Um, whether it be technical, the technical aspect of it or the organizational skills or the time management, if they give you an assignment which is due in three weeks, you know that you have to give it in three weeks, otherwise you know you face the consequences. So while you're at work, if you have a project, you, know, you kind of get in the same mode, you kind of adapt the same sort of situations. So it's not just about learning. I mean, learning is a part of education. Education is way broader than learning. And the course gives you an educational experience, which is even way broader than that. So, off this year, I would like to work in the UK if I can. And the policy stays safe. <laughs> and, um, yeah, make, make a couple of quid. Uh, buy Villa in Greece, uh, I don't know. <laughs>